Paul, a character that we haven't seen in a long time, but definitely a beloved one by a lot of Pokemon anime fans. I would say Paul is one of the biggest fan favorites when it comes to Ash's rivals. Paul was the jerk rival we all loved. He was a savage, and he really knew how to train his Pokemon. In doing so, he had a lot of Pokemon that he had trained over the years, and it got me thinking with all those Pokemon. What would his best team be? Today, I think I found out. Paul has a lot of power, so let's just hop right into it. Electivire got a ton of screen time during Diamond and Pearl, and that makes sense because he is Paul's ace. So obviously, that means Electivire is going to be the first member of Paul's best team. This Pokemon has a ton of merits that earns it this spot on the team. The first one being its amazing battle record. Electivire won all but three battles throughout the series, with one of those being a tie against Ash's Pikachu at the beginning of Diamond and Pearl. Another one of those being against Brandon's Regirock, and the remaining one being against Infernape when it had Blaze activated. The reason I add who he lost to is because they were all really, really strong opponents. The wins he has under his belt are pretty impressive. For one, he proved to be strong even against Pokemon he should be weak against. In the gym battle against Rourke, he managed to one-shot Geodude with a Brick Break, and did considerable damage to Onix as well. After Elekid evolved into Electabuzz, it trained a ton, even spending some time with Paul's brother Reggie, eventually leading to the full battle at Lake Acuity. It was here that Electabuzz was shown to have become more of a team player, with moves like Light Screen to aid his team members. It was also the Pokemon to defeat Ash's Monferno, winning the battle for Paul. Of course, it also had a massive showing in the Sinnoh League, where it quite easily defeated Barry's torn activated Empoleon, and played a massive part against Ash and the top 8, despite the type advantage. It was able to defeat Ash's Gliscor, and it put up a huge fight against it, and even though it lost, this battle went to show its strength even further. Electivire may be a bit full of himself in battle, but he proves why he is that way in every battle he takes part in. While Paul's Drapion has only been seen in one on-screen battle, that battle being against Ash in the Sinnoh League, it's clear that this isn't just some ordinary Drapion. After Paul had figured out Ash's strategy, it was an absolute monster, managing to take out half of Ash's team. It was able to do this because of the unique pairing of Paul's tactical abilities and Drapion's sheer strength. This combination created a unique moveset that included Toxic Spikes, which was the biggest part of the strategy poisoning most of Ash's team, including the three that it defeated. It was able to defeat Boizel, Torterra, and even Staraptor by keeping up the pressure while also having the added benefit of poison. It took one of Ash's crazy strategies to actually get rid of the toxic spikes by having Infernape use Dig and Flare Blitz to clear the field. The other moves that Drapion has are Cross Poison, Pin Missile, and Poison Fang, which were utilized very well in the Sinnoh League. I know Drapion hasn't had much on-screen battle time, but if it was even half as strong in any of the off-screen battles as it was in this match, I have no doubt that it would live up to the hype and earn a spot on this team. Next up is Paul's first ever Pokemon, his starter, Torterra. While this Pokemon isn't Paul's ace in Diamond and Pearl, it is clear that Paul has a high respect for this Pokemon and may even consider it to be his strongest. A little hidden detail is that during the battle Paul had with Cynthia at Amity Square, while many of his team members were defeated by her Garchomp, the second that Torterra fainted, Paul forfeited. This goes to show that Paul knows that if Torterra goes down, he has no chance of winning. Cynthia was also notably impressed by its strength. Outside of that, we only saw it battle a few times, but they really managed to show off its strength nicely. In the Heart Home Tag Battle, it was able to single-handedly win the battle against Brock's Krogunk and Holly's Farfetch'd. Later on at Lake Acuity, it showed no remorse in battling Ash's Gliscor either. Much like Ash's Pikachu, Paul's Torterra had traveled through Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn at some point before they got the Sinnoh. So Torterra has the same traveling experience as Pikachu, and based on its appearance in the anime, it seems to be just as strong. With moves like Stone Edge, Crunch, Leaf Storm, and Frenzy Plant, this Pokemon is a certain force to be reckoned with. It's more kind than some of Paul's other Pokemon, but it also has been shown to be a ruthless battler as well. Honchkrow is considered by Paul to be one of the foundations of his team, because it rarely ever fails him. Similar to Torterra, Paul caught Murkrow at some point during his journeys through Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn, meaning this Pokemon had a lot of time to train under Paul. As a Murkrow, we didn't see it do much on screen except get destroyed by Cynthia's Garchomp. 
but after it evolved, this thing was really strong. It defeated Mei Lin's Metatite and Machoke relatively easily, and in a later episode, it had no trouble beating Ash's Turtwig, even when it evolved into Grottle in that battle. Later on during the Lake Acuity battle, Ash wanted to use Grottle against it to get revenge, but unfortunately for him, Haunt Crow was still too powerful using a combo of Haze to Blind Grottle and Night Slash to knock it out. Now, these may not seem like impressive victories, but the fact that Ash's Grottle was shown to be relatively strong, especially as a Turtwig, makes these seem like legit victories against a strong opponent. Aside from Night Slash and Haze, Haunch Crow knows Dark Pulse and Sky Attack, which is the strongest flying type move, and has no doubt helped Haunch Crow out a lot since he learned it. So, despite the fact that there weren't many on screen victories from Haunch Crow, it is one of Paul's most seasoned Pokemon, and is a great fit for Paul's best team. Ursaring is an aggressive Pokemon by nature, and Paul's is no different. Paul caught this Pokemon early on in the Diamond and Pearl series, and ever since that day, Ursaring has put in the work and shown why it has earned a spot on this team with every battle it's taken part in. Throughout this series, it is shown to be an extremely strong battler and a vital part of Paul's ensemble. It has been in a lot of battles, but only lost the two Pokemon, those being Ash's Chimchar slash Monferno and Brandon's Regirock. Another thing that makes this Pokemon strong is its ability Guts, and while it isn't necessary to help this Pokemon win, it definitely is a welcome asset for Paul. Guts was shown off in Ash and Paul's like acuity battle, where it was able to take Boizel and Staraptor without using the ability. But once Pikachu's static paralyzed it, Pikachu went down as well because of Guts. Later on in the Sinnoh League, Paul decided to use Ursaring against Barry, and it showed that it can be strong even at a type disadvantage. Barry's Hitmonlee tried its best, but once Blaze Kick burned Ursaring, the battle was over and Paul had won. This Pokemon has been shown throughout the Diamond and Pearl anime to be able to take a ton of hits and deal just as much damage back because of its high stamina and resilience, making it a perfect Pokemon to join Paul's best team. Paul's Magmortar was a beast throughout the Diamond and Pearl anime. Not only was it able to take a ton of hits from all types of moves, even super effective ones, it was also one of Paul's most trusted Pokemon when it comes to forming strategies for battles. This Pokemon made some noise when it was introduced, because it was shown in a flashback that it easily defeated Malin Zucario. Magmortar is also one of Paul's most versatile Pokemon on the moveset side of things. None of its attacking moves share a type, and it can weaken opponent's attacks or even distract them entirely as shown when it was battling Ash and Boizel at Lake Acuity. It's also surprisingly agile, seeing as it was able to jump high up above Boizel for the surprise attack in the same battle. At the Sinnoh League, Magmortar one-shot Barry's Skarmory, taking it out with ease, and managed to impress the audience by showing that it was strong enough to withstand the power of Empoleon's Hydro Cannon. This Pokemon would put in the work on Paul's best team for sure. So Electivire, Drapion, Torterra, Haunchcrow, Ursaring, and Magmortar. This is Paul's best team, and seeing as Paul is most definitely taking on the World Coronation series, if we ever see him return in Pokemon Journeys, he definitely should be using these six Pokemon on his way to the top. I want to see current Journeys Ash have a rematch with Paul. I want to see how much stronger Paul has gotten. I'm sure he has also captured a lot of Pokemon along the way since then, so Journeys better bring him back at some point. They brought Gary back, so I'm sure Paul will make an appearance soon as well. Let me know what you think about Paul's team though in the comments below. Would you have made it differently? And what mons would you have chosen? Let me know. So with that said, thank you to everyone for watching the video. Huge thanks to my phenomenal team and the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If you all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, as it really helps us out. I also do other content on my Twitch, where I stream Genshin Impact, Mystic Zora, where I do Pokemon Let's Plays and other gaming content, and of course Mystic Sage, where I do all anime content. Right now, I'm focusing on Inuyasha and Yashihime, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. If you'd like to support me even further than that, check out my Patreon. Whether it's a dollar tip to get early thumbnail access, or the $10 tier to get cool perler bead charms and a shout out. There's tons of reasons to join today. These lovely people did, and I thank them all so much for their support. It really means the world to me. I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I'm Mr. Gumbrion, and I will see you all next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.